Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back, everybody. And before we get going, just want to ask everybody if you haven't subscribed or if you did subscribe and haven't checked, make sure you are subscribed to both channels with the bell clicked because it always seems people are getting unsubscribed. Yeah, isn't that strange? It's so funny, isn't it? We'll get another Wikipedia with this one, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, we're going to get a big one. A at least one. Let's shoot for at least one. So... How many people out there watch Game of Thrones or at least know of it or have seen a scene from it? This one really hit me because it really felt like kind of familiar. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I mean, kind of feel that feel into it. And it just seems like it it's so real, right? Absolutely. You know, giants fighting alongside humans and big ones, too. Yeah, I mean, and if you didn't do what they say, they could just step on you. Yeah, or throw you like 300 feet. Uh, it's fascinating, is it not? The whole concept of giants, there there are legends of giants all around the world. There's not like a single place or a single tribe that doesn't have legends of giants. And in fact, you know, when we look to Sumeria, we see giants basically enthroned. And is it just to say, oh, he's the king, he's very powerful, that's what they tell us. It's because he's the king, he's so powerful, and it, they make him seem so much larger you know, like everybody will come up just over the knee. Uh, yeah, no. No, this is because they were actually supposed to be that big, and they actually were. They were. I mean, that's just something that I guess they use a lot of symbology, and they try to make it like, no, it, it, this, it's all about the meaning. But no, people drew what they saw. Absolutely. You know, and again, we got to keep waking people up to what is truly going on and what happens here and we talked about the different yugas and when we're in the dark age the kali yuga we're basically in a 3d existence as we cr climb out of the kali yuga we will find ourselves going into 4d first in the lower astral realms and and this lower 4d zone is where we start to encounter these guys and and right now every a lot of people might be experiencing the understanding that there's entities around you that you can't necessarily see but you can feel them and that's the start of things absolutely so we are coming back into a time frame where many people if we you know, if we make it through the next handful of years which are going to be tough we will see a time where you will see non-human entities uh, being introduced to you mm -hmm. and they will look very very physical so you know so much of the world has been brought up on the Abrahamic tradition and you're taught fallen angels and again angel in the Greek it basically means messenger and so these were messengers emissaries they were beings that were going to and fro down to the planet away from the planet and of course, now we understand that there's extraterrestrials, which simply mean beings that didn't originally grow up on Earth. They came from a different planet because there's tons of planets out there and there's different densities. So we have interdimensional beings as we go on up through and we ascend up towards fifth density and we head towards that golden age. There's going to be a time period where all the myth and legends, the giants and all sorts of other beings, too, will actually come back into looking perfectly physical to us. So the question arises, how could humans mate with fallen angels if, if fallen angels are what we perceive as non-physical beings? And, you know, the answer is the beings were physical at that time, and that's how it could actually happen. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, there's so much information here that's covered up. Uh, a lot of people have gone to great lengths to either make the truth sound so outlandish or just try to prove that these things don't exist. Absolutely. And, you know, here we see the wars between the Sumerian city-states. Because in Sumer, each of these city-states, they were rivals. And again, as above, so below. Even though these beings uh, that we group together and call the Anun <coughs> Anunnaki... <coughs> And Sassy's actually barking at a couple of horses that went by. Um, <laughs> beautiful horses, too, by the way. Even though these, a bunch of different beings that we group together collectively and call them the Anun Anunnaki, 
these beings were here physically and there was a time when we could basically have joint offspring and then of course we could throw in the whole artificial insemination and you know putting basically uh, sperm and ova together in test tubes and we've seen so many cases of abductions where there many beings will see beings in test tubes cindy remembers being up in in a ship and oh, and seeing beings in stasis they were they were in stasis i mean this experience was so real and <clears throat> I don't know, it felt like a very long time passed, even though it was just a few minutes had passed, but it felt like hours. And they actually showed me that <clears throat> white light and they showed me this uh, programming code. It was so strange and I, I've never experienced anything like it. And the only thing I can figure out is that the reason I did experience it is because there's going to be people in my life who have also experienced this thing and I need to have... a uh, a bit of an understanding of what it's like so that I can help people through that. You know, you're triggering memories in me um, because I may remember many, many years ago, like 20 or 30 years ago, um, being in that half asleep, half awake state and all of a sudden seeing uh, what looked to be Sumerian cuneiform writing mm -hmm. rolling in front of my eyes. And now that I think about it too, the color was just like the emerald tablets. It was a, a green glowing color which really kind of made me feel like you said more programming ish yes. um and so yeah you're triggering memories there as well and then i really want to take note on on the time and how time really doesn't exist because it, it was only a few minutes but i know i was there long enough to do a lot of things and it was when they had put me in a, a sleep paralysis state and it was actually in the daytime that's what was really strange there was things going on around me it was in the daytime but I, I couldn't move I was just in this um, state of being completely frozen and only being able to to see uh, different entities entities behind like um, I don't know some kind of a, a computer thing but then also seeing the bright white light with the the writing and all of that was changing it was quite an experience and I think even now I'm still a little triggered when I talk about it you know so it makes me think of again the Bet Betty Andreasen uh, story and uh, this always hit home because uh, it happened you know like just maybe 15 miles away from where I, I was living in Connecticut and here you see beings that we would look at and call Nords or Pleiadian looking type beings and there's greys here and all different types and you see different types of ships um, but she did describe being up on the ships and this is the one I was looking for and seeing people of all different types and backgrounds and stasis and you know also I mean I would add to that even more non-human types of beings yeah. are up there as well right now I haven't gone um, under any kind of hypnosis to remember more yet but it is my understanding and I can see how people are traumatized when this happens and it's like their subconscious is doing something that they don't understand because of these episodes I don't necessarily think it's a very nice thing to do to humans absolutely not so getting back to Sumer each one of these city-states had their own quote-unquote patreon god their own divine being that they worshiped some you know could have been marduk some it could have been enlil some it might have been in her sag or you know any of these other deities and they were always 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 at war with each other always elam and kish and uruk and lagash and uma you know it's always just a non-stop thing with war and you know fought over resources but we we get to that even to this day um there's four distinct uh groupings of these beings that we would put together as anunnaki um that claim different groupings of people and you could go let's go over here and i'll hand it off to Cindy while I'm digging this up <laughs> well he, he does this when we're putting shows together I can just see the gears going through in his brain and it's really miraculous and we're probably going to end up with this show not quite as we had planned because you know people get 
inspiration and what's inspiration it's from the spirit so many times you can just tell he's channeling this information as he does it it's really cool because and i know a lot of people there are people that would be upset at this and there's still people that always say the most high because they're brought up with the bible so this is all they know and this is the song of moses and deuteronomy 32 8 always is one that sticks with me when the most high gave the nations their inheritance when he divided the sons of men he set the boundaries of the people according to the number of the sons of God or the sons of the gods. This is talking about the Anunnaki. This is talking about dividing people up by different Anunnaki leadership, each tribe to a different mm, divine being, different sons of the gods. And so when you're seeing reference to Most High here, you're not talking about God as in the creator of this universe. You're not talking about the source of everything. You're talking about the head of the Anunnaki. This is who you're talking about. And people don't understand that because they're brought up with this. And here's the truth. Yes, there is a creator of this universe, but it's not the Anunnaki. They are occupying fourth density just above where we are in our waking consciousness. In our sleeping consciousness, we could still be above where they are. We could be in, in the middle four, fourth density, even in the upper fourth density. In meditative states, we could be up in fifth density at times if we're touching you know, that type of vibration and frequency well above them that they can't even get to. Even though their technology is, is very, very powerful compared to what we have here, our spiritual technology is actually above theirs if we are you know, cultivating it, so to speak. And so this, when they're talking about the Most High, they're talking about the Anunnaki, splitting up the world, this, and dividing it amongst themselves. And then they're always at war with each other, uh, because that's just who they are. And it goes on to say, but the Lord's portion is his people. So again, you know, one particular being has each different nation or tribe of people. And again, just to reiterate, this is the Anunnaki. This is not the creator of the universe. This is not the source of all. And then we, then it makes sense when when you're told by the Old Testament God to go and kill every man, woman, and child and you know claim that land for your own, put the gold in the storehouse of the Lord, uh, everything else, you know, put the fire and everything, and then, you know, that's your land because I have given it to you and taken it away from, you know, whatever, their cousin that they're arguing with, their, you know, another Anunnaki. Basically. Right. What they like to do, and this is um, something they just keep doing over and over, is they like to make the, the vessel very, very uncomfortable by either giving things or taking things away. And when we meditate and we do our mantras, we are able to rise up and above that place where they can make us physically uncomfortable. And that's what we need to do to really grow that light body. Absolutely. So these beings, you know, their temple was their house and they lived in there when they were here and they got the best food they got all the offerings right you know then in, in many cases the most beautiful young virgins were, were left and brought to them when you read things like uh, the sound of god walking through the garden or the smell of the sacrificial lamb being pleasing to the lord these these are hungry entities <laughs> this is what is you know, the thing that makes sense. How could fallen angels? Well, because they weren't really fallen angels per se. They were just simply beings that were on the same density as we were at that time, always fighting with each other. And actually, they would be leading the charge sometimes into battle. And, and they'd be there by this, you know, in front of or behind um their subjects sending them off into battle so when we go back to that uh first scene that we were looking at that is a familiar one that comes from our actual history yes and i know when i look at this i can feel 
the truth in it. I can feel what all of those people were feeling and what this big guy here his intentions are and he's going to lead that whole group to do whatever he says and if you don't you're going to be made very uncomfortable absolutely so when we look at all the warfare that's going on right now it all makes sense this is just their way this is their way these we have tens of thousands of these tablets telling very very similar stories how old? At least 4,200 years. I mean, they way predate anything biblical. So again, anybody that is thinking that the Bible is the inerrant word of God, well, that's falling from mainstream media. Totally. It, it, it's completely the Anunnaki narrative. You have to look deeper. There is, you know, hidden nuggets in there. Absolutely. And it was interesting, too, is, is that... You got to just really look for them because we could, as we've talked about, Jacob's ladder. There's 33 rungs. There's 33 vertebrae in the spine. You know, where did Jacob wrestle with the spirit of God? At pineal, 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 you know, pineal gland. This is all kundalini. This is talking about consciousness. The seven lampstands, the seven churches, the seven main chakras. Yeah. And the christened one, what does it mean to be christened, anointed? Again, that's all cerebral spinal fluid. It's kundalini. It's activating our consciousness and developing the light body. Getting angels' wings, as we've talked about. That's your Merkaba being fully activated. And when your Merkaba is fully activated, you're going to be able to be way above where these beings can go. Right. Now, you do have to go through a kind of sensitivity as you're... you're neurons change your whole body changes your chemical makeup changes and you become so hyper sensitive to everything around you your senses are able to pick up different entities that are not viewed with the with the two eyes but you know that they're there you get these feelings everything changes yeah so when we see these tablets and they're telling the stories of the gods as if the gods are actually here they were here, and yeah. and they are coming back, and they will be. And as we shared with you in yesterday's video, um, you know that whole thing that went on. Why did the rulership of the world, both religious wise and political, go down to Antarctica? It was to take direction on what the plan is, because it did feel as if they were going to start this big war years back. You know, good like five years ago now. And then they were told not to because they received their direction from above, from out there. <laughs> and so, you know, an Anunnaki emissary came here and actually met with the leadership. Now, the GG are beings that are third density like us. And again, the GG, we, we hear the stories of them rebelling and saying they're not going to do the heavy work anymore. They're not going into the mines. And so they altered what was here on its natural spiritual progression. And again, technology doesn't equate spiritual to spiritual progression. We could be technologically in a dark age, but spiritually in an enlightened age. As the technology uh, of these beings, the Anunnaki Draconian uh, technology is actually one that's used to enslave consciousness and to keep from ascending up out of that lower fourth density. And they will be offering it to people, anybody that wants it, hey, come aboard. And there's going to be many people that take it, you know, because again, you know, these are your signs and wonders and it's it's all twisted and distorted on purpose, always to confuse and so, you know, this is an ancient form of writing, and there's so much to this from which everything that we get pretty much from the Bible and also the uh, Egyptian traditions and the mystery schools, it all comes out of that. Why were we in Iraq and why have we been all over, you know, the, the Middle East? Because so much stuff is hidden there. It's not just even about the oil. It's not just even about the resources. It's about wiping out anything that can, again, give us a true indication of, of who actually owns the planet in times of a dark age. Right. Um, so all of this information is about keeping us under control. And 
they are definitely using the mind control. The mind control is going on more than we think. And I know a lot of you are picking up on that saying, you know, wow, I was just thinking about this and an ad came up on the screen. And right now it's about an information war. Whoever has the most information or can gather the most information is going to have control. This is how they work. So, you know, is there, they always try to get us to deal in absolutes. Yeah. So is there creation? Like, are you a creationist or are you somebody that believes in evolution? Are you an evolutionist? Well, the fact is both have happened. Both. Is there intelligent, intelligent design or is this all just one lucky cosmic soup? No, there's intelligent design. It's obvious there's intelligent design. Is there a creator of the universe? Yes. And, and we've gotten that the creator of this universe is not necessarily the creator of another universe. As each universe itself is just a single bubble, a single cell, and something bigger. It goes on forever. And yet there is one ultimate source. But yet they'll give you these truths, so to speak, saying there is but one God, there is but one source. But then they'll give you something that makes them empowered by saying, and it's me. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's basically what they've done. You know, why? Why do we have the Yahwist texts and then the Elohist texts? And, you know, how does all that jive? And we've talked about that before. And we've talked about the fact that, you know, these secret societies control the narrative. And you look to King James, who gave us the King James Bible, and the fact that he was the head of all the Masonic lodges in Scotland and in England. And, you know, many people believe that actually the person that wrote Shakespeare's plays is the same person that gave us the King James Bible. And that's Sir Francis Bacon. Yes, so they give us a lot of these stories for us to buy into, and that's why it's so important, and we're always always talking about it to um, awaken our, our inner knowing. Yeah, the flood stories, you know, again, well, what do we have that's written? The oldest full written Old Testament, or we should say the Pentateuch, that's actually handwritten, I think, if I'm, and you could correct me, but I want to say it's about from 900 AD, somewhere around there. And yet we have these writings from 3500 BC, or even older, obviously taken from these accounts. And and again, it's all about revisionist history. They're constantly re -revi revising the history. Oh yeah, you know, these beings were real. They were very, very physical and, and very, very must, much amongst us. And yet there's so many distortions that go on. And, and some will throw out everything about the Anunnaki, even though there's you know, so many thousands and thousands of references to them and, and say, well, you know, Sitchin was a Mason, but he's not the only one that's, that's translated these things now. Yeah, there's so many people that have, different people that have translated them, you know, tens of thousands of tablets, and you don't have to just, you know, put all your eggs in that basket. We see again and again, humans, again, tied hands behind the back, rope around the neck, it makes you feel like you're looking at something from our horrible history, taking people from Africa, bringing them over to work the plantations. And yet these beings much larger and, and in all different sizes as there were giants of many, many different sizes. And then we see gold mines that are 100,000 years old. And yet we're, we're, we're taught to think that we were nothing more than you know, running around with sharpened wooden sticks maybe 10,000 years ago. Oh, I know. Those are the greatest stories. You know, the pyramids were made with chisels and hammers, and that's it. How how are these guys, were they? Are they mining the gold with their sharpened sticks? Yes, they were. I mean, <laughs> come on, let's get real here. And if you don't agree with me and mark that on your answer page, you're going to get an F. You know, these are the type of pictures that were given. So, you know, she knows that she's got to go mine gold. And she's got the baby. She's going to yeah. strap the baby around the back. And I'm going to just start chipping away at that goal with my sharpened wooden stick. Yes. Yeah. How far is that going to get you? Yet we see these legends. These legends like the Zulu. The Zulu talk about um, beings from the stars that came here 
for our resources. And they've never left. Well, they may have left because they're in a different density, but, you know, they are coming back again. And that's your day of the Lord when, you know, everybody will look up into the sky and see all these ships in the sky and wail and, and say, oh, woe is us. Yes, it's not going to be a good day. No, no. And not when you see people like this, you know, coming off of these ships that are so much bigger than you. And, and many of them have voracious appetites, unfortunately. That reminds me of that to serve man. Oh. <laughs> Twilight Zone, or was that the Outer Limits? I forget. We see this, and, and I was there. I put my hand on it. Shh, don't tell. Uh, this is Judah Color Rock, and this is in uh, western North Carolina. And Judah Color was another giant, and this is supposed to be his hand down here. Um, interesting, interesting. The Devil's Courthouse is is a area maybe about... 15 miles away, I want to say, from where this rock is. And this giant was supposed to basically hold court there and roamed over this whole area. And he held court over humans, other giants, and beings that are not of the physical uh, vibratory frequency, um, but that we hear of in legends. Right. And when you asked me about this entity, I'd never read about him before. None of that. When I was feeling his energy and what he was like, he, he was not nice at all. He was very brutal and he used his power and his um, mass to really torture people and harm them if they didn't do what he wanted. And again, many of these beings are, again, offspring of those that we would call the Anunnaki and humans. Yeah, and they're not all bad. No, this guy just has something about him. He also had a lot of mind control. He had a lot of power. So, you know, we see Enki and Enlil, right? And that gives us the uh, good cop, bad cop type thing. And, and yeah, there's different degrees. Some of them are more uh, willing to put humanity on a more equal footing. And we even look to the stories themselves that we get from uh, these Sumerian tablets. And there is a time when Anu, you know, who is the father of Enki and Enlil, was going to grant humanity immortality. And Enki, who is the one that supposedly, according to the story, saved humanity, at least salvaged some of them, where Enlil was going to wipe them all out. Well, Enki tricks uh, you know, the hero, the human hero of the story into declining immortality because he still wants to maintain humanity as a slavery. Right. And they keep doing this, too. It's just a common theme that they keep tricking beings. Yeah. And so that that kind of tells you right then and there. Yeah. As as is in the case with any species, you're going to have all sorts of th think of it in terms of not looking at things in black and white. It's just a million shades of gray. Yes, uh, that's a really good way to put it. Don't just stick to one, to one uh, thing that your your mind is telling you. Expand that. Think of more things because in this world, we've been brought up with an education that only benefits the controllers, and that's why they give you these educations is so they can just keep you in a box right away. So he was known as Sukalu uh, to the Cherokee in this area. And again, you know, there were so many different legends of, of different races of giants, too. Like you were seeing that the ones that you were seeing were mostly more kind of Nordic looking. Yes, the ones I was seeing, they did have the blonde hair, but they were tall. And um, there's, you know, there's all kinds. I'm lucky enough I can see some some detail, you know, the Caucasian. Um but yeah, I mean, there's all different kinds, all different flavors, and we have to keep that in mind. Yeah, and basically, um, one of the things you did get too was that we could look to the four main races on Earth, and each has a different progenitor as far as the, uh, you know, Anunnaki uh, DNA, so to speak, that has been uh, merged with the what was, you know, whatever was that preceded Homo sapiens. And we know we had Denisovans and we had Neanderthals and they disappeared. They were actually physically bigger and stronger than us and they had larger brain capacities. But they're made to look like they were less than us. But in many ways they were spiritually way more in tune with the earth 
and way more in tune with the nature of things. Understanding the harmony and the importance of harmony is where we're headed to the fifth density where um, being harmonious with er with everything is just a natural desire. And if you see someone or something that's out of harmony, the, the gentle guide guidance back into harmony is what they do. It's just second nature. So that's where we're headed. Yeah, it, you know, the whole mother energy has been wiped. And, and again, when we've looked at Nibiru, it looks worse than Mars almost, if that's possible, as far as harshness. Uh, a planet that's literally just on life support because of the way it's been treated by its inhabitants. And then, you know, the Mars situation uh, that shows evidence of great wars that have gone on and of absolute abuse. And there's still beings there that are still mining the planet for resources under the surface. There's evidence of mining operations here on Earth that are ancient, just so predating us, millions of years. Right, and understanding that gold and silver and gems have another purpose besides vi visible beauty. Um, they have a other purpose of you can use colloidal silver a lot to keep yourself from getting an infection, and you can also use it. I'm not a doctor not a doctor but i have used it for myself to treat infections and as far there's colloidal gold which can really help you and these gems carry certain vibrations that give them different abilities and they had all of this understanding and we could relate this perhaps um to the way that we look at say the stories of the bible you have people that look at everything literally in the bible and they can only see it in a literal sense You'll have people that look at gold and silver and say, nice and shiny, pretty, and diamonds and other gems, and, and just look and say, well, you know, they're pretty. So people hold them of value because they're attractive. But the reality is what, what Cindy's saying. Yeah, they have other uses, like silver, antiviral, antibacterial. This is like perhaps looking a little deeper into the stories that are so obvious and they're given as a cover, but the reality is there's much more behind that. And so when we get caught up looking and trying to decipher, well, when does the millennial reign of Christ happen? Well, it's it's not, you know, and unless you're looking deeper and you're saying, you know, if you're expecting Yeshua to come back and physically rule in the flesh, that's not going to happen. Now, if you're talking about the rule of the Christ that, consciousness the christened consciousness that's different because you know when's that going to start where we're living out of the heart chakra when we're starting to live a 5d reality well that is coming so you know again it depends on how you look at it if you're just looking at it from a simple perspective of shiny pretty nice that's why they hold value no because you know again with the different crystals they amplify energies and we know also you know we understand now with computer chips the value of of different compounds right and so many people that we've worked on you know i asked them to have crystals with them and so many times these crystals they actually get hot because we're working with them here and they're working with them there and then the also the other thing crystals do is they can hold a pattern so once we pattern someone uh, when we're working on them, the crystal that they have holds that pattern so they can use that for healing more often. Absolutely. And then somebody else had made a statement talking about um, what Roger um, covers, mud fossil. Oh. Yeah. How big were some of these entities? And yeah, some entities were enormous. And some entities, again, um, when we look to like Tiamat, and the destruction of a different planet that used to be it perhaps, you know, uh, in that asteroid zone uh, that we see. It, it definitely was a, a planet that was there that was destroyed. A lot of beings um, evacuated and many beings, you know, didn't make it. And, you know, again, it's obviously relative because Nibiru is much bigger than the Earth and the Nibiruans, maybe we should call them Nibiruans, um, are in general much larger than we are, that's for sure. Uh, so it is relative. And yeah, there were beings that were enormous. 
Right. You know, I, I really love his work. He's gone he's gone way out of his way and he's really put himself out there for a lot of ridicule and a lot of slander because he has a different idea. But if you do look at his ideas and spend some time how he explains things, it makes sense. Absolutely. So, you know, it's fascinating. You gotta look past just one source. You'll never get it if you're just looking at one source. You have to, you know, look at all the different things available from every single tradition. And then you really need to develop your own intuition uh, through meditation, mantras, qigong, things like that. So you can have discernment. That's the key. But we will all have this discernment as, as we grow. And once your pineal glands open, then you'll start to see things clearly. So you can look at certain people and when they're, you know, the politician's lips are flapping and you just see right through it. And that's why we have so many people waking up now because their light bodies are becoming activated. Their pineal glands are starting to come online and they're recognizing the BS when they see it. Oh, I just lo love it too. Not that I want anyone uncomfortable, I but I do want the entities and the controllers to not have so much control. And I love seeing people come together like this in mass and this is what it's going to take and it's okay and it's beautiful that we come together and raise our vibration, raise our consciousness together. This is how it's supposed to be. Absolutely. So again, guys, we want to thank you for your support on uh, Ko-Fi and Patreon. You know, do check out the playlists. And again, we would encourage people to check out the mantras and the Qigong playlist and uh, incorporate mind-body practice into your life. It'll go miles. Again, we couldn't do this without you guys. Much love. God bless and namaste. Namaste.